Hello, good evening. Welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's six o'clock on Tuesday, the 15th of March. We use in common worship daily prayer, evening prayer during the Lent season, which you'll find in the book towards the beginning after prayer during the day. If you're following online, you can find the words at Remus Daily Prayer or the Church of England's website, or indeed download apps for Apple or Android devices. I'm in the building. You're very welcome to join me here if you're passing. <clears throat> Eight and six every day by Monday. Sunday we have traditional communion in the morning and uh, said even song with hymns in the evening. The codes for the Zoom meeting, you're very welcome to join me there, are on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page. We are live streaming on Facebook and I upload the audio onto my uh, Dominic Doble YouTube channel uh, in due course. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, to be glory and praise forever. In the darkness of our sin, you have shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Open our eyes to acknowledge your presence, that freed from the misery of sin and shame, we may grow into your likeness from glory to glory. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The George the Sinner hymn, the following. Lord Jesus, think on me and purge away my sin. From earth-born passions set me free and make me pure within. Lord Jesus, think on me with many a care oppressed. Let me thy loving servant be and taste thy promised rest. Lord Jesus, think on me nor let me go astray. Through darkness and perplexity point thou the heavenly way. Lord Jesus, think on me that when the flood is past I may the eternal brightness see and share thy joy at last. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. The Psalms appointed this evening may be found at the back of the book in the Psalter. 52, 53 and 54. 52, 53 and 54. We'll open and close with refrains provided. We'll say the glory be between the last verse and the refrains we repeat it. I'll read straight through. You're welcome to listen to all, read all, or just read the even numbered verses as if we were doing it antiphonally here, audibly to each other. And the prayers that follow uh, may be used in silence as we see fit. Psalms 52 to 54, inclusive. I trust in the goodness of God forever and ever. Why do you glory in evil, you tyrant, while the goodness of God endures continually? You plot destruction, you deceiver. Your tongue is like a sharpened razor. You love evil rather than good, falsehood rather than the word of truth. You love all words that hurt, O you deceitful tongue. Therefore God shall utterly bring you down. He shall take you and pluck you out of your tent and root you out of the land of the living. <clears throat> the righteous shall see this and tremble. They shall laugh you to scorn and say, This is the one who did not take God for a refuge, but trusted in great riches and relied upon wickedness. But I am like a spreading olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the goodness of God for ever and ever. I will always give thanks to you for what you have done. I will hope in your name, for your faithful ones delight in it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. <clears throat> I trust in the goodness of God for ever and ever. Any connections we might make in our minds to tyrants that we're aware of today are entirely excusable, in my view. Psalm 53. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. 
The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. Corrupt are they and abominable in their wickedness. There is no one that does good. God has looked down from heaven upon the children of earth to see if there is anyone who is wise and seeks after God. They are all gone out of the way. All alike have become corrupt. <clears throat> there is no one that does good. No, not one. They have, have they no knowledge, those evildoers, who eat up my people as if they ate bread and do not call upon God? There shall they be in great fear, such fear as never was. For God will scatter the bones of the ungodly. They will be put to shame because God has rejected them. Oh, that Israel's salvation would come out of Zion. When God restores the fortunes of his people, then will Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Behold, God is my helper. Save me, O God, by your name, and vindicate me by your power. Hear my prayer, O God. Give heed to the words of my mouth, for strangers have risen up against me, and the ruthless seek after my life. They have not set God before them. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who upholds my life. May evil rebound on those who lie in wait for me. Destroy them in your faithfulness. An offering of a free heart will I give you, and praise your name, O Lord, for it is gracious. For he has delivered me out of all my trouble, and my eye has seen the downfall of my enemies. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Behold, God is my helper. Scrolling past our first reading to A Song of Christ the Servant, turning back to the same in evening prayer during Lent. Christ committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example, that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in turn. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he trusted himself to God who judges justly. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Christ committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. <clears throat> Our first Bible reading, Jeremiah 8, the first 15 verses. The large numbers in the text are the chapter numbers, the small numbers are the verses. So we're looking for the book of Jeremiah, which opens the major prophets alongside Isaiah. They come just after. So if you're following in a book off the shelf, it's uh, between halfway and two thirds of the way through. You find the prophets section after the wisdom bit. Jeremiah chapter 8, the first 15 verses. They may also be found if you're following online just before the canticle we've read a moment ago. At that time, says the Lord, the bones of the kings of Judah, the bones of its officials, the bones of the priests, the bones of the prophets, and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be brought out of their tombs, and they shall be spread before the sun and the moon and all the host of heaven, which they have loved and served, which they have followed, which they have inquired of and worshipped, and they shall not be gathered or buried they shall be like dung on the surface of the ground. Death shall be preferred to life by all the remnant that remains of this evil family in all the places where I have driven them, says the Lord of hosts. You shall say to them, thus says the Lord, when people fall, do they not get up again? If they go astray, do they not turn back? Why then has this people turned away in perpetual backsliding? They have held fast to deceit. They have refused to return. I have given heed and listened, but they do not speak honestly. No one repents of wickedness saying, What have I done? All of them run their own course, like a horse plunging headlong into battle. 
Even the stork in the heavens knows its times, and the turtle dove swallow and crane observe the time for their coming. But my people do not know the ordinance of the Lord. <clears throat> How can you say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us, when in fact the false pen of the scribes has made it into a lie? The wise shall be put to shame, they shall be dismayed and taken, since they have rejected the word of the Lord, that wisdom is in them. Therefore I will give their wives to others and their fields to conquerors, because from the least to the greatest everyone is greedy for unjust gain. From prophet to priest everyone deals falsely. They have treated the wound of my people carelessly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. <coughs> they acted shamefully, they committed abomination, yet they were not at all ashamed. They did not know how to blush. Therefore they shall fall among those who fall. At the time when I punish them, they shall be overthrown, says the Lord. When I wanted to gather them, says the Lord, there are no grapes on the vine, nor figs on the fig tree. Even the leaves are withered, and what I gave them has passed away from them. <clears throat> Why do we sit still, gather together, let us go into the fortified cities and perish there? For the Lord our God has doomed us to perish, and has given us poisoned water to drink. Because we have sinned against the Lord, we look for peace, but find no good. For a time of healing, but there is terror instead. <clears throat> So the first bit in prose is uh, relatively unusual. <clears throat> the bones of the kings of Judah will be spread out across, across, over the ground, um, keeping them in an ossuary or a vault, I guess, for those who have the privilege, the money to be able to achieve that was a great honour in death. But these are going to be spread abroad over the ground like dung, which is sort of a final humiliation. <clears throat> And then we move on, we're being told, J Jeremiah is being told to say to God's people that uh, they're sort of almost working against nature. If people fall, do they not get up again? And God's people don't. None of them are repenting of wickedness, saying, what have I done? The priests, the prophets are dealing falsely. They who have charge of God's people are treating their wound carelessly. They're committing abomination, in other words, serving false gods. And they don't know how to blush. <clears throat> Arguably, those false gods and the worship of them involves um, fornication. We're told that uh, the wives of those who are the audience of Jeremiah's message will be given to others. And their fields to conquerors. What wisdom is in them? Wisdom is another expression or word for the word of God and uh, law and prophecy. What wisdom is in them? Nothing. They have rejected the word of the Lord. They like the false pen of the scribes, those who interpret scripture. They've rejected the word of the Lord. The wise shall be put to shame because they have rejected the word of the Lord. God turns up to uh, look for grapes on the vine, the vine that produces wine for the Passover and uh, temple celebrations. But there is nothing. The system of nurture and nourishment, spiritual, physical, for God's people, has all gone. I was just having a quick look through to see whether it says anything here about looking after the poor and needy. Uh, I can't see it immediately. This is just about worship it seems to me elsewhere in Jeremiah the um, lack of proper wholehearted fulsome worship is held up alongside lack of care for people and the environment <clears throat> the Lord our God has doomed us to perish and has given us poison water to drink we look for a time of healing but there is terror instead May we hear these words and see in our own land these uh, manifestations of wrongdoing. And may we ourselves turn and apologise. And may we, as Jeremiah, call on those around us who do not worship in spirit and in truth, those who oppress the poor, that they may turn to God as they fall, that God may help them stand again. Our second reading from the Gospel of John, this time chapter 6, large numbers at the head of the paragraph, chapter 6, small numbers in the text, 52, verse 52, 
to verse 59. John is the fourth of the Gospels that open the second covenant of Greek scripture. So if you're following the Bible, turn to about two thirds of the way through and open it. And uh, familiar Christian names, those of us of a certain generation, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. If you're finding those, then you're in the Hebrew, Greek scripture. So move onwards or towards the back of the book. And um, <clears throat> if you're a bit before that, you might find some Hebrew sounding names or more Hebrew sounding names to us. Um, they're the minor prophets. So John 6 from 52. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. Whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. <coughs> We're given this by this gospel writer, so I guess we have to heed his words and give him the benefit of the doubt that Jesus did say this. But it seems to me it's more likely that it was a developed doctrine um, of the Johannine community, a religious community like the Essenes, um, sometime after Jesus was around, um, coming and going amongst us in time and space, as that human being, that son of Mary. In John, there isn't, uh, as I understand it, a Holy Communion or Last Supper narrative or story. The feeding of the 5,000 and discussion of wine and uh, bread throughout are all hints and echoes of uh, what, uh, how the Mass pervades all aspects of our lives. And Jesus here is in a really quite extreme metaphor, um, not allowing those who don't understand or believe to understand or believe. Uh, and he is talking about his body and his blood and the eating of it. And uh, those who read, know, understand, arguably, would immediately think that he is talking about the bread and the wine as used in the, the services that remember the Passover, the Last Supper, which became one of those defining features or sacraments of the early church. They would recognise, I think, that he isn't talking about actually sort of chewing off a thumb of this man or um, cutting a hole in his side and drinking the blood that comes out. Uh, I think it's uh, understood that they would have understood what they were talking about. Effectively, it's another way of talking about abiding, which is another common, um, repeated thread uh, in the Jehanine literature. Remaining grafted in to the vine. Unlike that turning of the back, that lack of repentance, that uh, not engaging with God properly, but going after false gods that we read about in Jeremiah. So let us pick ourselves up, turn ourselves round and face God as we say, Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. The Song of Mary. Come, let us return to the Lord, for our God will richly pardon my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. In this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Come, let us return to the Lord, for our God will richly pardon. Let us pray. Spirit, Son, Father, one in three, three in one. At the end of this day, we come to you and uh, lay our lives before you, 
and uh, recognise our shortcomings. And we thank you for your grace and your mercy. And uh, we recollect those moments in the day where you have been with us, where you have been in communication, in fellowship, discussion with those who love you. And that's been a blessing for us, where we have used our gifts and talents for the service of others, to raise money, to keep ourselves and our families in food, where we've heard good news, where we've been able to give good news, all these positives of life in you, we thank you for at close of play. We also look back over the day and recognise we've heard bad news, not least in, from Ukraine, perhaps in relation to our finances, our health, our relationships. We may have had to make tough decisions, which we know have, will let people down or disappoint people. We may have submitted to our voices in our heads and self-harmed. Things may have not gone well for us. And so we come to you at the end of the day for protection, for provision, for security, seeking your life, your love, your hope. From release international prayer feed on my prayer mate app under Islamic law, um, certainly as it is expressed in some nations, being exposed as a Christian in Afghanistan, for example, puts people at risk of being charged with apostasy, punishable by death or imprisonment. We pray that God will frustrate efforts of those trying to identify Christians to that end. From Christian Aid, opening their prayer diary, and as I do, scrolling through to find today's date, we give thanks and pray for the excellent work of their policy team. Prayer from the Joint Public Issues Team for Ukraine. God of all, with alarm and concern, we bring before you the military intervention in Ukraine. In a world you made for peace and flourishing, we lament the use of armed force. We mourn every casualty of this conflict, every precious life extinguished by war. We pray comfort for those who grieve and those who are fearful. <clears throat> Here are our longing that leaders and nations will honour the worth of all people by having the courage to resolve conflict through dialogue. May all our human failings be transformed by your wonderful grace and goodness. We ask this in the name of Christ, the author of peace and sustainer of creation. Amen. <clears throat> Turning to our Suffolk Diocese prayer diary, we are invited today to pray for Leon and Linda, a minister and uh, clergy uh, ordained and reader, minister unordained, not ordained, in the benefice of the saints in the Waverley and Blythe Deanery. Pray, pray God's blessing on them and their permission to officiate and license and other clergy and their elders and their church wardens, treasurers and secretaries as their lay leadership. We pray your blessing on them. May they be encouraged by the idea of eating your body and drinking your blood, becoming part of you, an expression of you as they abide in you and are sustained in you through their participation in the Holy Communion. We pray too for our chaplains to the British Legion across the county. May they be a blessing and encouragement to those retired service people. And we pray for Deo Gratias, who is a priest in Mubuhenge Parish in the Kagera Link Diocese. May he be encouraged by his calling that you have given him. And... Uh, May he persist as he speaks truth to power. May Jeremiah pray for him. And in our places, we give thanks for the town of Halesworth. And we pray for the businesses and people in and around Holton Road, Key Street, Norwich Road, Wissett Road, London Road, Bramfield Road, Walpole Road and Halesworth Road areas of the town. We pray that those businesses based in or serving those addresses will thrive and prosper and make good decisions in the current difficult climate. Pray for people living there, whether they have good or bad experiences. We pray that you will assist them to turn to you rather than turn away from you, whatever they have, whatever those experiences are. I don't know why it is when bad experiences turn people away and good experiences turn people away. Sometimes bad and good turn people to faith and to the Son of Man. And uh, we pray that those of faith, that their life experiences will grow and build in them fruit of the Spirit that will be valued treasured uh, and influential towards by those amongst whom they live in those addresses. We 
We pray for those who are struggling at the moment. Anna, John, Nick, Lillian, Dennis, Kay, Sarah, Ron, Liz, Maggie, Valerie, Di, David, Paddy, Mike, Malcolm, Margaret, Anthony, Olive, Jean, Barbara, Beryl, Betty, Peter. So, Alison. We pray your blessings of health, wealth, prosperity on these and those we know and love. We pray that you will make a change, make a way where there is no way. And we ask that your rod and staff will comfort them, helping them to make progress and not stumble, but also um, defend them from the thoughts that assail. We pray that the knowledge and experience of eating and drinking of you will sustain, nurture, support, protect these in their time of trial. Finally, we thank you for what's good in the lives of Lyra, Rowley, Doreen, John, Joan, Don, Tony, Rodney, Muriel, Basil and Arnold. Especially for John, laid to rest today. We pray too for those who died suddenly and unprepared through sickness, violence, neglect, accident and those that have taken their own lives. Pray for those we've known and loved and see no longer, those who are certainly faithfully here and all whose years mind falls at this time. We ask that according to your promises to humanity, you grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. We pray for ourselves and all who mourn the loss of loved one or change in life chances, that we will hear your voice rising above the darkness and chaos of our grief, and that you will bring light and order and fruitfulness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. the prayer for Lent from the book Almighty and Everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you, God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.